So I'm super excited for today's video. I finally got my hands on Addictive Drums 2, thanks to the kind people at XLN. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make my own breaks with Addictive Drums. By the way, my name is Stranger, and I provide you knowledge and tools so you can succeed in making bass-oriented music. Addictive Drums is a powerful drum studio which allows you to customize your drum kits by selecting drum hits as well as shaping the drums with various parameters and mixing features. It's a super versatile instrument and there's so much you can do with it that we wouldn't be doing it justice just by doing one video. So we're just gonna cover the basic functions today and then I'm gonna be doing a live stream where we can dive deeper on the functions of addictive drums. Comment down below and let me know what you guys prefer, synthetic drums or acoustic drums. And thanks to all of you who've supported me in 2020. It's been an incredible ride with you guys on YouTube. And I look forward to bringing you even more knowledge and tools so you can succeed even further this year in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Appreciate your help. By the way, if you want to support me, you can pick up a number of my products. I have a bunch of Ableton project files which allow you to create jungle and liquid drum and bass with a few clicks to a button. I also have some merchandise at my online shop and I'm proud to announce my very first serum preset pack called Gnarly Volume 1. It's available for pre-order right now with a discount and it comes out on January 26th so you can check that out in the link below. All right without further ado let's check in with addictive drums. <laughs> Okay, so here's Addictive Drums, and they call Addictive Drums the ultimate drum production studio. It really does live up to its name because the things that you can do with it are quite extraordinary. Now, there's so much that you can do with Addictive Drums. It wouldn't do it justice just by doing one short video. So I will be doing subsequent videos where we dive a little bit deeper. But for today, I'm gonna show you the basics on how I would create a drum break using Addictive Drums. So as I mentioned, Addictive Drums is a drum production studio. So essentially what it allows you to do is to build your own drum kit by selecting different pieces and then customizing it. It really does its best to emulate a drum studio by providing everything that would be available in a drum recording studio, including the microphone setups, as well as all the mixing drum buses available. And Addictive Drums comes with tons of different packs depending on which pack and expansion kit you get. They have an assortment of packs dedicated to different styles from rock, funk, hip hop, and even electronic sounding drum kits. And each of these packs contains a specific drum kit consisting of different snare drums, kick drum combinations, and whatnot. So we're currently looking at the gallery view where you can navigate across the different packs that you've installed. We can click on this view here so you can see it more at a glance. And you can hit this play button just to preview each kit. So now we're in the explore function. So you can switch between gallery and explore by clicking these two buttons on the top. You could also go directly to the preset browser. So within each pack are a number of different presets and the presets are just a combination of different drum settings and effects. So when you click on a pack, it loads it up into the explore view. So you can then check out the different presets. So within the black velvet pack, you have all these different presets and you can preview them. And they allow you to preview each piece if you click on it. So you can hear how each piece would sound in the kit. They also provide you a couple of different controls here so you can adjust the kick intensity, snare, Overhead are just the microphones that are placed overhead the drum kit. So they're hanging above the drummer 
and the room is the room mic which is recording the ambiance of the room so you can control how loud each section is now if you go under kit here this is where you can see the elements or pieces of this drum kit. So you can see that there are an arrangement of symbols provided in this kit, a number of toms. This is the kick for this kit. Here's the snare. Here's the hi-hat, cowbell. Now, if you want to edit each piece, you can click on the edit section here, and then this brings up the editing parameters for each piece. So we're looking at the kick here. So this shows the all the parameters to customize your kick. And we'll get more into this later. This middle row here contains all the insert effects available for the particular bus that you've selected. So currently we have master selected. So it's showing what's available on the master bus. You could click on the overhead bus and it shows the effects applied there or the room. They've also provided an additional bus here where you can select specific drum hits and send it to this bus. And this allows you to apply further processing. For example, if you want only the kick and snare to be sent to this bus, so you can um, add some saturation to get some really crunchy kick and snares without affecting the hi-hats, then you can do that by sending the kick to the bus. And then, the beats section are all the MIDI grooves that come with addictive drums. So you could create your own MIDI groove or you can load up one of these MIDI groups. And these grooves are recorded by a live drummer. So there's a live feel to it. So you can quickly apply one of these grooves to get a realistic sounding drum break. And there's a number of different MIDI packs here. So you can look for a pack that would work with your vibe. Now I have a couple that I've selected as some, some of my favorites. So we can just go there and we can load it up. And to preview the uh, MIDI groove, just click on the play button. So that one sounds good. Now, if you want it to sync to your current tempo, I'm at 110 beats per minute, then you can click on the sync tempo button and then play it. And that sounds good. So if you like this pattern, then you can click and drag it and export it as a MIDI and put it into a uh, MIDI clip under Ableton. Of course, you can then preview your your pattern. And this allows you to edit the kit if required. Now you may want to create your own pattern and that's totally cool too. So sometimes I would sequence my own. And the first hit starts at C1, it's a kick. So you can create a basic funk pattern. They've given you an assortment of snares so you can choose a different snare for your main snare on the two and four. And then you could choose a different snare for your ghost hits. And you can bring the velocity down. So notice when we bring the velocity down, the sound of the snare changes. And what they've done is they've recorded a number of different takes of the exact same snare at different velocities, as well as additional takes for that same velocity. So when you hit on the same snare a number of times, each one will sound minutely different. So that sounds more realistic. I'm just looking for my hi-hats. So maybe I want an open hi-hat here. So I'll add an open hi-hat here. And close hi-hat. And then I can alternate between these two close hi-hats here. 
and I like to adjust my ghost heads a little bit so it's a little more groovier so I can move them off the grid like that. Can move this one a little so it's a bit different. So you can make your own groove or you can just import one of their own grooves that they provided which would give you a more uh, human kind of feel so it's really up to you. I might take this one and maybe we'll reduce the number of hi-hats so we could just take up these hi-hats here. And really we just need the two bar so I'll just make it a two bar loop. And there's some ghost hits that I don't need so I can take that out as well. Don't need that kick. I just saw a simple funk shuffle. So that's how you can take one of their groups, edit it to your liking. So all the placement still has that human groove to it. And then you can go back into addictive drums and then we can edit the uh, kit to our liking. So I'm gonna go back into the edit section and let's edit the snare. So under the mixer, select snare, and this brings up the parameters for shaping the snare. Now, the first thing we may want to do is switch up the snare. So you can click on the load button and find another snare if you like. It becomes hard to choose because they're all really good. That one sounds cool. Let's load this one. Now that we have a snare selected, now you may want to solo the snare so you can click this. Yeah, that sounds nice and crunchy. Now you can control the overhead level. Now remember the overhead are simply the microphones placed above the drummer so you can bring the overhead level up. And then you can increase the room ambiance. You may wanna leave the room ambiance lower so it's a tighter sound. And then you could pan these microphones as well. Now on the right here, the kit piece controls. Now you can turn it off or you can turn it on. The first section is the responsiveness. And this is how responsive it is to changes in velocity. So this is the minimum velocity and this is the maximum velocity. And this is the volume sensitivity. So at zero, velocity has no impact. All the snare is playing at the same level all the time. Since we're using ghost hits and we want the ghost hits to be hitting at a lower velocity, then we do want the volume to have some sensitivity to the velocity. You could also uh, apply a filter sensitivity so that low passes the sound as the velocity uh, is decreased. You may want to make the ghost snare sound a little more muted so that filter can do the trick. Now in the pitch section you can pitch up the snare by semitones Now what's interesting, you could also pitch up the overhead room recording so that then you can combine do two different pitches. So the main one is pitched up and maybe the room is pitched down. 
That might give you some interesting results. Now over here is the tone designer. This allows you to shape the ringing tones for each uh, kit. Now this is available only for the kick and snare. Now this shows you the frequency profile for the ringing tones of the snare. Now if you change the snare, each snare or kick has a different frequency profile. So there's specific, I guess, resonant frequencies that you can shape with each snare. So essentially you can determine how quickly those ringing overtones um, decay and you can specify where it starts as well as the level of that ringing tone when it ends, when it decays. This actually allows you to shape the overall tone of the snare. Now the volume envelope applies shaping to the actual volume of the snare. So you may want a snare with a sharp attack so you can bring the sustain level down. So that snare is mostly that attack and that sustain is all the way down. Now you can adjust the release, which is the tail after the initial impact of the snare. So for fatter snares, you may want a higher sustain level but for more tighter, sharper snares, then you want to bring the sustain down so you focus on the attack. Now, one thing I may have missed is that if you click on the actual buttons here, this panel actually shows the insert effects for the specific channel that you've highlighted. So uh, on the snare section, we can see that we can add some noise can also add some compression, EQing, and tape simulation. The snare buzz, you can increase the amount for a more buzzy kind of snare. Now, with the kick of snare, there is two mics. There's one microphone on top of the snare, and then there's a second microphone on the bottom of the snare. Now, you can adjust the balance between the top and bottom, meaning how close the bottom is to the mic. So notice when it's more towards the bottom, you get a more snappier sound. Where it's shifted to the top, you get more of that body of the snare. Now, I'm not hearing much of a difference with the snare buzz. I think it'll depend on the snare that you've selected, but it's definitely a useful feature to customize your snare sound. Okay, let's quickly customize the kick. So let's solo the kick now. Okay, we can specify the kick that we want. And tons of different kicks that we can choose. That one sounds cool, let's go with it. So we may, may want to pitch it up. Now we can adjust the volume envelope to make it less beefy. Now with the kick, again, there's two mics, one in the back and one in the front of the kick. And we can again, adjust the balance. So when it's more to the front, then you get more of a beefy, deep kick. And then you get more of that, um, that initial impact if you move it closer to the beater. Again, these are insert effects for this particular channel on the kick. We can spend hours customizing each piece. However, we'll save that for another video. I just wanted to show you quickly how I would create a break. We can go over to the overhead section here and this will show the uh, parameters or effects applied to the overhead. Now notice we can adjust the volume of everything on the mixer here. Perhaps we want less overhead, then we can bring it down. 
we can solo it. Let's hear the room level. If you click on bus, then you get these meters on top and this specifies how much you're sending to the bus. Let's say we just want the kick and snare to be sent. So let's remove Tom. And now we only have kick and snare being sent to the bus channel. Okay, now let's unsolo so we can hear all the pieces together. Uh, there's a send effects section here now. There's two sends here. There's effects one and effects two. Uh, I may want to reduce it for the snare. Now I just want to edit the hi-hat a little. I want a tighter sounding hi-hat. So let's see what we got. Maybe it's this particular hit, so you can select it and just go through it. There could be a. Sh they provide you a number of different styles of the hit, so you can. Maybe it will switch between the two like that. That's better. Now you can adjust the effects level here overall effects level let's add some more saturation to the drum bus so that makes the kick and snare a little more snappy maybe add some noise to it now i'm doing this at 110 beats per minute and there's a specific reason why I'm doing this because what I'm trying to do is emulate the real drum breaks from funk and soul records. So I'm playing at a slower tempo and what I'm going to do is then record the drum groove as an audio and then I can resample it as a break. Now what's cool about addictive drums is once you've had addictive drums playing for a couple bars, on the bottom left here, there's an audio recorder and notice there's this WAV file here. So if you click and drag it, you can add that as a audio clip into your Ableton. So now that we have it imported as an audio clip, we can then bump it up to 170 beats per minute and then just like a funk break, we pitch it up so it sounds more like drum and bass. So I'm gonna use this knob here and then transpose it up seven or eight semitones. Six sounds good. You can try different algorithms, see what works best for your drum recording. And then from here, you can add additional processing. For example, I might have a uh, isotope trash preset that I might want to apply to my uh, drum groove. So this preset we made in the Amen trash video that we did a couple weeks ago and I'm just using this preset and I'm dialing the preset between dry and wet. So there's a bit of the dry and wet signal. So that's sounding more like a jungle break now. Now we could take this uh, drum groove, we could also slice it as a MIDI track and then we could have the different slices so we can then resequence it. So I'm gonna build one per transient and we'll use one of my slicing presets and just make sure the trash plugin is applied to this track. Now you may need to pitch it up So now that you have it in here, you can sequence it. I'll use one of my uh, favorite sequences.
You can add some bass, some atmospherics, and then you got some jungle or drum funk or whatever you want to make with it. So let's hear what we got here. So we got some pretty cool drum funk in the works here. And I was just playing with the transpose, just playing with it live, but you could also modulate the transpose so it does the pitching as the track progresses. Fun stuff. All right, as you can see, XLN's Addictive Drums 2 is a powerful tool. And there's so much you can do with it. I look forward to doing a live stream so we can dig deeper. From the sheer variety of different kit pieces you can use to customize your drums, not to mention a vast amount of parameters you can use to shape your drums, as well as customize your recording, make this a super powerful tool. And it really emulates a real drum production studio and beyond. And if you guys are interested in picking up Addictive Drums 2, then you can check it out in the link below. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. And if you did, then make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. And I'll see you at the next video.